Let's continue where we stopped. In the last video, we talked about the mana and we explained that this was a natural phenomenon posed as a miracle by the biblical author. Let's focus on the quails. Let's turn our attention to the quails. Much like the manna discovered by the people each morning, the arrival of quails in the evening can be naturally explained. The story provides minimal details about them, and it clearly indicates that they were not a daily occurrence. During their journey to and from Mount Sinai, the Israelites encountered migrating quails twice. They encountered quails that were migrating. They encountered them twice. The first incident occurred in the desert of Sin, located on the west coast. It was the evening of the 15th day of the second month, as mentioned in Exodus 16 verses 1. This was when quails descended upon them in the spring. The time frame where the biblical author has them leave in Egypt. Exodus 16. It came to pass in the evening that quails went up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. This is the first occurrence. The second encounter with quails happened again in the spring. It's important. Put that in your spirit as described in the book of Numbers 11. On the 20th day of the second month, quail, we are told, were carried a short distance inland where they fell near the Israelites. Then a wind from yud heh vav -He sprang up and it brought quail from the sea and let them fall beside the camp about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side, around the camp, and about two cubits above the ground. And the people rose all that day and all night and all the next day and gathered the quail. Those who gathered least gathered ten omes, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. What are these quails? The focus here is on their coternix coternix, which is a small tailed game bird from the peasant family and is known for its rapid low altitude flights. We are looking at the coternix coternix a short tail game bird from the peasant family which is known for its rapid low altitude flight. These quails migrate in large flocks from Europe to Central Africa every autumn, that is from September to December, and then they make their return journey in the spring. Now, given the lengthy distance, their migration occurs in stages. Twice a year, these small quails arrive exhausted on the Mediterranean shores, making them easy to capture in large numbers by hand or with nets. This still happens today. Where? Not in sub-Saharan Africa. In the Sinai Peninsula. From this article, from 2016, from Bird Conservation International, 
is titled Hunting for Migratory Birds from North Sinai, Egypt. Summary During autumn migration, people set trammel nets along most of the Mediterranean coast of Egypt. With migrating common quails, Coternex Coternex, as their primary target. These nets capture large number of quail. Let's go down to where I've highlighted in the introduction. It says, in Egypt, people have been trapping migrating common quails, Coternex Coternex, at least since the Old Kingdom. 2650 to 2150 BCE. Let's read further what I've highlighted. During autumn migration, hunters now set nets along almost the entirety of Egypt's Mediterranean coastline from the eastern border town of Rafa in North Sinai to the Libyan border town of Saloum in the west. They capture most quail with long lines of trammel nets. The nets, which are supported by poles set into the ground, typically catch birds from ground level to about 2.5 meters in height. They are usually placed about 500 meters from the shoreline on the mainland, as required by governmental regulations, and three meters from the sea on sand bars. As I said, this is still happening today. Let's read another article from 2008. Age and sex determine the phenology and biometrics of migratory common quails. Coternex Coternex at Iliad, Israel. Where is Iliad, Israel? Iliad, Israel is a city in Israel. It's not in sub-Saharan Africa. It is located at the southernmost tip of the country on the coast of the Red Sea, not the River Nile. If the Israelites had crossed the Nile into Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, they would have missed encountering the quails. You won't find anyone catching quails by the Nile River. Let's read the article, what I've highlighted. We analyze data for the common quail Coternex Coternex, caught by the ring program at Iliad, southern Israel, to understand age and sex-related phenology of migration and biometric differences in the only long-distance migratory Pessinidae in the western Pileatic the number of quail caught during spring were higher than in the autumn season. Again, the number of quails caught during the spring, remember when the author of the biblical exodus have them going out. It was during the spring. This article is telling us that the number of quail caught during spring were higher than in the autumn season. Let's read the highlights in yellow and green. The common quail, Coternex Coternex, is the only long distant migrant of all the western Paleatic Pacinidae. The species is of special concern because of excessive hunting when on migration, especially in the Mediterranean basin. 
The common quail, just reading the highlights, crosses the Mediterranean Sea in the autumn in large numbers and several hundreds of thousands are netted annually along the North African and Sinai coastlines. During the spring migration period, birds fly across the Mediterranean on a very broad front. Furthermore, Guyomac described four routes of spring passage from European quail population, three of them crossing the Mediterranean Sea. It is important to note that owing to the fact that to date only the European population has been studied, only the Mediterranean flyaways are mentioned and little is known about the migration of the quail in the east. Iliad Israel is located at the northern edge of the combined Sahel, Sahara and Sinai Desert. During spring migration, this is where the author of the Exodus have the Israelites leaving during the spring. The article is telling us that during spring migration, the quails reach this region, not sub-Saharan Africa. They reach (laughs) this region, the Sinai Desert, after a long and arduous journey. Many spring migrants returning from their wintering grounds in Africa to the Paleatic breeding grounds are unable to store enough energy to complete the migration without refueling at Iliad. Let me read that again. Iliad, Israel is located at the northern edge of the combined Sahel, Sahara, and Sinai deserts. During spring migration, the quails reach this region after a long and arduous journey. Many spring migrants returning from their wintering grounds in Africa to the Paleatic breeding grounds are unable to store enough energy to complete the migration without refueling at Iliad. This is where they are catching them. Not in sub-Saharan Africa. Let's read the green highlights to continue. In a larger geographical scope, the ringing station is located at the southern tip of the Arava Valley, that is, the section of the Rift Valley between the Red and Dead Seas. This is not in sub-Saharan Africa. The region is mostly desert as defined by annual rainfall. But in recent decades, human agricultural settlements have been established along the western side of the valley a process that has produced green areas in the desert. In addition, Iliad is situated at the northern edge of over 200 kilometers of continuous Sahel, Sahara and Sinai deserts. In the north-northeast, however, there are still 650 kilometers more of the Syrian desert. And to the east, lies the vast Arabian desert. Hence, many birds land in the Iliad area in autumn to rest before or in spring after crossing these deserts. So, where are we placing these birds? In the Sinai Peninsula where the Israelites are placed by the biblical author, not in sub-Saharan Africa. The author of the Exodus narrative informs us that, again, positing it as a natural event. Quails migrate through the Sinai Peninsula, 
particularly along the coastlines, and they do so in the spring. The Coternex Coternex can be found in the Sinai Desert, the quails that the Bible mentions, particularly during their migration periods. As we read, as they migrate between Europe and Africa, they often stop in the Sinai region, not Sub-Saharan Africa, especially when they are exhausted from their long journey. This makes the Sinai Desert one of the areas where they can be easily captured during these times. So you see, we can position the occurrence of manna and quails in the Sinai Desert on the path to Canaan rather than to Sub-Saharan eastern, southern, or central Africa. The timing aligns perfectly with the quail's migratory return to Europe, providing a well-established natural backdrop to the biblical story. Similarly, manna is understood as a tangible natural phenomenon. It is the timely nature of these events that lends them a sense of the supernatural. This is what the biblical author is trying to portray. The timely nature of these events is what lends it a sense of the supernatural. When we look at the we look at when the Israelites in the wilderness, they God gave them quail. And it says, it says in the morning there was dew on the ground yes. and quail. How can you have dew on sand? When we look at the, we look at when the Israelites in the wilderness, they, God gave them quail. And it says, it says in the morning there was dew on the ground yes. and quail. How can you have dew on sand? When we look at the, we look at when the Israelites in the wilderness, they, God gave them quail. And it says, it says, in the morning there was dew on the ground yes. and quail. How can you have dew on sand? So in summary, dew does indeed settle on sand. It means that my brother Ron Dalton Jr. is not accurate here. Now, the tamarisk bush proves the current location of the land of Canaan. The traditional location, it does prove it. Also, the migratory paths of the Coternex Coternex, the quails that you read about in the biblical text, all lead to the historically recognized location of Canaan. Not where my brother Ron Dalton Jr. wants it to be situated today. It seems the speaker mentioned these points without much deliberation. 